Many were surprised by the great value offered by the base Apple Mac Mini M4 that was recently launched. You can often use the words Apple and great value in the same sentence. The basic offering does have one glaring shortcoming, the limited SSD storage. Higher storage configurations are available, but at more typical Apple prices. How can we address this? In this video, I'll be looking at two alternatives that are significantly more cost-effective. Using prices for the new base version of the Mac Mini M4, Apple charges $800 to go from the default 256GB to 2TB. The charge is $1,200 to go from 512GB to 4TB in the M4 Pro version. We can do way better in terms of value for money by using external SSD storage. The following is the criteria I put together for selecting an external storage solution. First is performance. I wanted to be sure that whatever I picked didn't suffer from throttling and hamper productivity because of poor throughput. Flexibility to use different NVMe SSDs for reuse and expandability. It has to be reliable. While I can't test the long-term reliability, keeping the NVMe cool to prevent overheating is something I feel is important. Cost effective. This is one of the primary reasons for looking into external storage in the first place. Form factor and industrial design. This has to be relatively compact as there is the possibility of it being used in a mobile environment and it's going to be sitting beside sleek Apple products so it shouldn't stick out like a sore thumb. The two products I'm testing both support USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4's 40 gigabit per second speeds and can take standard NVMe SSDs. One employs a small fan to keep things cool while the other is fanless but utilizes the enclosure itself as a heat sink to draw heat away from the SSD. Here is a quick look at the first product. This is the USB 4 M.2 NVMe SSD enclosure from Ugreen. It is a nicely designed black anodized aluminum case with a bronze colored sheet of what I assume is also aluminum attached to the cover. The enclosure comes with a protective silicon case, a USB cable, a small screwdriver, two SSD mounting screws, one is an extra, and thermal tape. The USB port is on one end with small air vents on either side of the device. There is a small power LED located on the lower left of the cover. The cover is held on by a single screw. Inside you can see that the standard 2230, 2242, 2260 and 2280 sized SSDs are supported as well as the fan. Installation of the NVMe is straightforward. I'm using a Lexa 4TB NM790 SSD to test the performance in the three different external enclosures. The thermal tape is then applied and then the cover can be put on and held down with a screw. The official name of the second product is the OWC Express 1M2 Portable NVMe Thunderbolt SSD USB 4 External SSD Drive. The enclosure comes with a foot-long USB cable, a screwdriver and a piece of rubber strip meant to go on the bottom of the enclosure. The OWC device is a relatively hefty aluminum enclosure. The upper part of it consists mostly of cooling fins used to dissipate heat from the NVMe SSD. There is a bright power LED in the front with a USB-C Thunderbolt port in the back of the enclosure. Unscrewing the two screws at the bottom allows the two parts to slide open. The NVMe SSD can then be installed. Note that there is no cooling fan in this enclosure. Cooling is handled purely via conduction through the large and numerous cooling fins. I'm using Blackmagic's disk speed test on a Mac Mini M2 Pro to benchmark performance. I ran the benchmark for four test cases. One, the reference baseline is the built-in SSD. Two, is a U-Green enclosure. Three, the OWC enclosure. And four, using an external enclosure that I had tested before in an earlier review from Savient. This is an enclosure that uses the slower USB 3.2 
10 gigabit per second interface. Here are the test results. I'm only showing the 1080p read and write numbers to keep things simple as they are a good representation of the overall performance. The key takeaways are as follows. The two USB 4 enclosures perform as well as the Mac Mini's built-in SSD. Both of these enclosures provide up to about three times the throughput of the enclosures using USB 3.2's 10 gigabit per second interface. This is consistent across both the 40 gigabit per second USB 4 Thunderbolt devices tested here. A couple of comments about the two high-speed enclosures being tested today. They both perform similarly to each other and to the Mac Mini M2 Pro's built-in SSD. This was one of my primary considerations and it's good to see that they both fulfill this key requirement. I specifically picked out these two products because one is actively cooled with a fan and in contrast, the other is passively cooled. Much of the differences in design result from the different cooling approaches taken. The OWC enclosure is twice as large volume-wise and about 50% heavier. While this may not be an issue if used in a desktop environment, it could be a consideration if it is used in a more mobile environment. There wasn't any discernible fan noise from the Ugreen enclosure when it was in use. This can be an important factor when working in a quiet environment. Temperature measurements were taken after running the disk speed benchmark for 5 minutes and this showed that the SSD in the OWC enclosure had an average of about 8 degrees C cooler over 5 runs. Here is a summary table that compares the different products that were tested. The NVMe SSD module I used cost $240 when this video was made. I paid $72 for the Ugreen enclosure and significantly more, $120 for the OWC enclosure. The total cost when used with the Ugreen enclosure is $312. With the OWC enclosure, the total cost is $360. These are significantly less than the $1,200 Apple charges for an additional 3.5 terabytes of internal storage. In summary, both enclosures perform equally well on the benchmark test. The Ugreen device uses active cooling and is much more compact and perhaps more suitable for mobile use. The silicon protective case that is provided may be useful in such a scenario. The OWC device uses passive cooling with a larger enclosure and lots and lots of cooling fins. It may be more suitable for use in a more static type environment. The OWC enclosure is also available with SSDs pre-installed in capacities of up to 8 terabytes in size. Both are aesthetically pleasing. However, I do prefer the look of the OWC device as the bare aluminum color better matches that of the Apple Mac Mini. Both products are excellent and I have no hesitation in recommending either one if you're looking at cost-effective storage expansion for your Mac Mini. So apart from the cost, there are other benefits to having external storage. First is that it's a good idea to physically separate system files from data files. With data files on external storage, you have clean separation and can easily back up the data or physically take it with you if you need to move it or for security purposes. It also makes it easy when you're upgrading hardware since the data is already on a separate medium. Thank you for watching. I hope you found the review informative and I hope to see you in the next review.